This is number three from Fernando Soares' Opus 60 Studies. And follow the lesson for free, but if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition, and there's a link for that in the description. So for number three, um, this is at the beginning of the collection. There's 25 etudes in Opus 60, and the first ones are relatively easy, and they progressively get more difficult. This one is still at the level of the first two, except maybe it's gone up just a little bit because there's some position changes. So we're playing in second position and first position as well. So that just that's relative to a one finger per fret rule with your first, depending on where your first finger is. So this would be second position, this would be first position. So we have some second position playing, as Sor does in his uh, original publication. You could play the piece all in first position, but because Soar um, does finger some of it in second position, um, I do that as well, with some you know exceptions when we, when we have certain notes. So we will talk about that position change, and also we're, we're using a lot of M and I fingers on the bass strings for this, so it's more of like a scale etude, um, with some extra texture but and some jumping around, but nevertheless most of it is like a melodic scale style um, texture. So let's talk about that right hand fingering um, right off the bat. You could play the whole thing just with M and I, um, alternating M I, and that would be a great exercise to do, and I've done it before. You know, there's some jumping around at times, but it's a really good exercise to do is to just play it with I and M alternation. Because I rest my thumb on the sixth string to secure the hand position, um, I do use my thumb on that sixth string. Also, sometimes that sixth string feels like it's a bass voice on its own, so I will use my thumb on the sixth string, but like I said, you could go either way. Regardless, the majority of the playing is with I M alternation. I start with M, thumb, And then you know the rest of it's just with I M. So you can experiment with that. With the very last bar of the whole piece, I do use thumb, thumb A or M, and thumb, just because it feels more like um, it's octaves, but it feels more like a chord texture, right? So yeah, pretty straightforward um, for the right hand fingering, but nevertheless, it's on the bass strings. So some people are are less comfortable with that. Although if you've been practicing your scales with with your I M fingering, um, you should just it should be just fine. In terms of left hand fingering, just follow the the fingerings in my edition. I pretty much follow what Soar does or what anyone else would do in this, except with one exception of of a fingering. I use my third finger on F, just in case you want to get some extra sustain out of that bass. So I do use my third finger on that F, and then my first finger on E to return to second position playing. So a little bit of an oddity, uh, but nevertheless, um, I've updated just like the very occasional fingering to make it just a little bit more legato um, for modern guitar technique, right? Uh, and because the texture is so easy, I think it's 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 a good little practice to like to use really legato fingering in this piece. In terms of the position playing, uh, just keep your positions really clear. You know, if your thumb is behind your second finger in second position, then when you switch to your first position, uh, make sure your thumb moves down the neck. Um, along with your hand, just to keep those positions, especially if you're more on the beginner side, like keep your positions very clear in your left hand. What you want to do is have a model hand position that you've learned from your technique practice. Um, like you can go through my technique book and do the alignment exercises, but um, you want a model left hand and then regardless of what position you're playing in, you just keep that, that model hand position. So in a few places when you switch to first position, just make sure that you are um, changing your hand position in that way. So for example, at bar 14, we're coming along here from bar 13. So uh, 
I was in second position, and then you switch to first position and make it a clear switch. 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 Switch to first position. So just very, a lot of clarity in your left hand fingering. Besides that, you're just trying to phrase um, as legato as possible and, and, and glide through this. Feel free to do the repeats. I didn't in the performance. Um, and then just um, get to know this this piece. You know, at first you might not like love this this one as much, but you know, single line playing is a there's opportunity for harmony in this piece and sustaining notes like you know we do sustain notes a little bit to imply harmony, but single line playing is something that cello players and violin players do for years and years and years, even to the most advanced levels. So guitarists um, make sure that you're even though the texture is very simple, that you're raising the quality of your legato and phrasing to as high a level as possible. You want to think about those cellists and those violin players that are that are playing single line stuff for you know the majority of their career at the highest levels. So you, you really want to just raise it up and avoid you know choppy playing, unsustained playing. Just as smooth as possible. Whenever you have those eighth notes, you know, just glide through as legato as possible with like a scoop to it. You know, you really can work on, on how well you can do that. Whether you're at the beginning, a beginner level, or you're at the late intermediate level, you can always work on this stuff well. If you have, even if you're super advanced, you can always work on your legato. So this is a great opportunity to do so in just a slightly different texture. So um, a small step up. And next we'll be doing number four, which introduces some new things as well.